today guys up in this beautiful pin oak is about 20 inches diameter just going up here and getting some of the hazard deadwood out and uh we're gonna be trying to raise it up over these burning bushes over here as well get it just to get a little bit more height to the tree a little bit more of a, a sight line to the to the street from the house and vice versa what i like doing on pin oaks is as i climb i'm making kind of a channel through the tree so i kind of reach everything that i can in my one area that i've kind of anchored up in before moving on to the next spot i like doing this because it gives open lanes for you to be able to toss down dead branches without harming some of the other foliage in the process I'm kind of doing this pie method on my initial ascent cleaning out kind of a pathway for those branches to be able to go back down the temptation is just to kind of go where all the big wood that you see that needs to be removed and, and kind of target those areas but doing that you can run into a situation where you're just piling up a lot of debris below you in the canopy which could potentially harm you know, some of the smaller sheets and foliage and so you work out little sections of the tree kind of helps eliminate some of that what we really try to aim for when we're trimming just cutting just outside the branch collar bark that little area there where it comes and joins the tree. Some of our new climbers is you really have to have blade awareness when you're cutting in a pin oak. It's very easy to lose track of your climbing rope. It's not uncommon for people to nick their ropes or cut through even their lanyards without even really thinking about it because they're so focused on where my next cut is gonna come and uh, where it's gonna be. Just something to kind of keep in mind when you're trimming pin oaks with this thick, thick inner growth. The other safety thing I like to tell them is watch out for hanging. Pin oaks like to hold on to their dead a lot longer than other trees typically do. This is exactly what I'm talking about with all this really thick interior growth. I try to keep as much green foliage on the inside of the tree as I possibly can. These trees uh, have been historically over pruned and they really need that inner growth to photosynthesize during the hot summer months. It's amazing what a little bit of trimming, cleaning out some of this dead interior growth will do cosmetically for the tree. Sometimes I get questions on whether or not it's worth going out to the tips of a, of a branch to get dead wood. And the question that I always kind of have to weigh in my mind is, will I be damaging more live growth on my way out to get that dead branch? Because the less damage we can do while getting dead wood out of the tree, obviously it's going to be better for the health of the tree long term. And it makes it kind of an easy decision. A lot of guys like to go out way on these limb walks and end up damaging a whole lot of interior growth in the process and just to get a little dead limb. And sometimes that causes more damage than it does actually help the trees. Just something to keep in mind. Definitely make or break you as a, a climber. They are the, in my opinion, one of the ultimate tests of patience, climbing a tree and figuring out routes, even potential rigging scenarios because they are so dense and they do have a lot of outward growth and so can make it challenging to try to navigate these trees. You never stop learning for how long you've been doing this and science is constantly changing the way we climb, the way we treat trees, constantly changing. That's one of the reasons I love it. I'm always learning something new. Much better. And cut. 